Electronic Arts has made a slew of big announcements during their latest call with investors. First up, EA has confirmed something that we all feared was coming and knew that it was coming. Microtransactions will soon be returning to Star Wars Battlefront 2. Um, microtransactions were turned off in the game mere hours after, uh, before launch after a massive backlash from fans, but EA has always planned to eventually bring them back. They say that the microtransactions will now return in the next few months, although it remains to be seen if they'll make any new changes in how they're implemented to alleviate the controversy. The negative word of mouth surrounding Battlefront 2 has hurt its sales, with EA saying that they sold only 9 million copies, a million less than what was predicted. For comparison, the last Battlefront sold 14 million copies in the same amount of time. In other Star Wars news from EA, the publisher has revealed that the new Star Wars game from Titanfall developer Respawn Entertainment won't be out until the 2020 fiscal year. That runs from April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2020, so expect the game in that time frame. Very little is, is known about the game other than that the fact that it will have lightsabers. The project is separate from the other new Star Wars game from Amy Hennig that had been in the works of Deep, uh, Dead Space developer Visceral Games. EA pulled the plug on that, as we all know, and moved the project over to another developer, EA Canada, where it's being completely retooled. No release window has been named for that, and clearly we have to send some EP both and spies into EA Canada to find out what's going on over there. Next up, EA has delivered delayed BioWare's online sci-fi game, Anthem. It was slated to arrive later this year. So far, it's been a lot of bad news in this call to investors, but will now hit Earth sometime in 2019. EA says the game will do better if it has more time in development, which follows the rush development of BioWare's previous game, Mass Effect Andromeda. Anthem is a much bigger undertaking, so the team will need all the time that they can get. There's a lot riding on this one. Finally, EA has officially again confirmed that a new Battlefield game is coming this fall. They had previously stated that a new one is on the way, although they still haven't said where or when it might take place. There are unconfirmed rumors that it will be a new entry in the Battlefield Bad Company uh, universe, possibly set during the Vietnam War, although we've yet to find out for sure. That's what I'm hoping for. Given that it's coming later this year, expect new intel very soon. Um, all right, let's switch over to some Nintendo news now. The Nintendo Switch has passed another impressive sales milestone. Nintendo has announced that the new system has officially sold more units in its first 10 months than its predecessor, the Wii U, did in its entire five-year lifespan. Since it launched in March 2017, the Switch has sold 14 million units worldwide, which not only beats the 13.5 million units uh, of the Wii U, but also makes the Switch the fastest-selling console of all time. Nintendo was already, uh, was already expecting this to happen and has increased their manufacturing output in anticipation of selling an additional 6 million Switches over the next few months. I've seen Switches in stores, so this is clearly happening. We've got uh, big news for World of Warcraft players. They'll finally be able to experience the battle for Azeroth this summer. Blizzard has confirmed that the next big WoW expansion will hit the PC and Mac this summer, although they haven't provided a more precise release date. First announced at BlizzCon last year, Battle for Azeroth will give players a new story set against the backdrop of a massive war, complete with new dungeons, raids, a higher level cap of 110, and two new continents to explore. This will be the first big expansion for the game since Legion was released in 2016. Now, the way that we're doing our rundowns now, and I probably should have uh, said this at the top of the rundown, is uh, we talk afterwards. So we just gave you a blast of information. Now's our chance to talk. If you guys have been chatting uh, or uh, commenting on any of this stuff that's happening, um, my big question to you, and we can come back to this, is who's still playing World of Warcraft? And who's excited for the, uh, the Battle of Azeroth? Um, I wish I had time to still be playing World of Warcraft. I had a great time when I did play it, but uh, that feels like a, like seven generations ago. <laughs> um, this EA news, though, man, holy crap. It's, um, it's a little bit mired in stuff, right? Like, I, I kind of wish that it was a little more celebratory about the fact that Star Wars is is uh, doing very well and we've figured out how to uh, you know make everybody happy with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and our expectations are that it's going to sell another 6 million units like Nintendo is thinking for the uh, the Switch um, I it feels like uh, it's more just sort of like well we already did all this work so we got to kind of go back to this model and we got to and uh, hopefully it's figured out uh, you know I, 
I, I didn't hear the investor call. The, these are notes that have been, uh, you know, called uh, by Blake to kind of get, get me uh, information around all of this stuff. So I don't know every single detail around this, but I feel like uh, the messaging from EA at this point should be all about, uh, you know, their message is players first, but they really need to be that now. They really need to come out ahead of all of this stuff and, and tell us exactly why they are players first. So the good news should be, uh, you know, uh, surrounding stuff like Battlefront 2. I really, really, really hope, I mean, they're, by, they're acquiring Respawn, so I really hope that uh, uh, this Star Wars uh, Respawn game is as incredible as Titanfall 2 is, and, uh, you know, there isn't too much um, sort of meddling to try to monetize it in a million different ways. You know, clearly they got to make their money back on it, but I, I just want it to be fantastic. I want it to be a fantastic game worth every single penny first. And I want to go into that experience not thinking or not worrying about uh, the, you, you know, the hooks that EA is trying to put into it to try to get more money from players and also the backlash around it too. You know, like I, I really want the the story around electronic arts because there's incredible people there you know and last i heard amy hennig is still at ea um so there are incredible creators there that really work hard to build awesome things and i just want their work to be the focus not the corporate infrastructure of electronic arts and the shareholder uh expectations and all that. so i just want you know, there to be good news surrounding the release of EA stuff. I've been doing a lot of Buried Treasures, as you know, and I keep going back to some uh, classic EA games. And uh, it's a little heartbreaking to think about all of the different brands and, and properties and, and creative people that they had working through their divisions. I don't want that to disappear. EA has this this unbelievable history in our industry and so much value. And I, that's what I want to see kind of uh, presented in their games. So hopefully we are going to be seeing some of that out there. We got an F microtransactions already from Donnie Swangor. Uh, Mondo Blasto, I, I, left, uh, I let my WoW sub lapse for a break in about December, but I expect to start playing again soon. There you go. Mondo, Mondo uh, Blasto Zero is not giving up on WoW, which is pretty cool. Uh, Adrian Leon, I wish I could return to a, a World of Warcraft as well. I mean, they, they're hours in a day, and we got to divvy them up, right? And the game companies, they keep making new games. You know, I don't, have you guys seen Monster Hunter World? Holy crap. Um, how, Donnie, has, uh, uh, Swan Gore hasn't played WoW in about five years. Uh, Chris Cuthbertson is saying, I can't imagine Anthem being anything close to what the preview looked like. They, I mean, they got to nail those targets, man. In the game and uh, and literally as well. Like or figuratively, they, they have to nail that, that visual sort of target that they gave us last year. Not only for, uh, you know, the these sort of mid-gen systems, the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, um, to help them sell and to, to sort of make them sing and 4K gaming. It's all part of the, the process of us sort of uh, gravitating towards 4K. It has to be an incredible looking game. Um, and, I, you know, I, they're capable of it. We'll see. We'll see what happens with there. Um, we got a uh, Doy Owen said, so happy I canceled my pre-order for Battlefront 2. I will not be looking back now that they are putting these microtransactions in. Yeah, this is not going to be good news for them, man. This is going to be uh, this is going to be a lot of hate and a lot of fury coming towards Electronic Arts right now on the internet. I'm sure. Uh, if BF Micros go over how uh, Overwatch does them, then sure, why not? That's Mondo Blasto Zero. John Matrix, I don't care about my tr microtransactions as long as they're not in your face cluttering the menus. Ubisoft has microtransactions, but I never see them and I don't get them shoved into my face. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think about this a lot too. It's the, it's not so much that the hooks can't be there and the handout for, you know, do you want to buy this? Take a look at this. We're going to be playing Injustice 2 a little bit later today, and, and um, I want to show you guys some Adam. Um, I wish I was showing you guys the Turtles, but they're not ready yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's a game where you, you know you can buy more stuff. You know it. And there is this whole sort of loot uh, box kind of unboxing thing to give yourself new stuff for your characters and things. Um, but again, that's a game that has done it, I think, in a pretty elegant way, you know? Uh, Shadow of War... 
I didn't really notice it too much, but a lot of people hated a lot of the uh, decisions there, I think primarily because it was a single player game. Um, Overwatch keeps getting sort of high praise for the, uh, the elegance with the way that they handled it, but Blizzard has had a long history of just doing, uh, uh, you know, cosmetic loot boxes and has understood that uh, free to play audience with, uh, you know, with their card game, with uh, the way that they've done sort of DLC in the past. So uh, I think they were just a little bit more attuned with it. And I feel like Electronic Arts, and I've seen some, some really fantastic videos about this on the internet, that EA really kind of looked at the FIFA Ultimate Team model, which they have ported to all of their sports things, and said, well, you know, we can, we can kind of uh, bring this and, and uh, into other spaces and make all of these games live forever and people will keep wanting to kind of invest in characters and stuff like that and, and augmenting their, their characters. And it doesn't quite work the same. I think the sports world has trained us to um, be regular consumers, you know, whether it's buying tickets per game or uh, buying a season pass and thinking nothing about spending $15 for a beer or, uh, you know, buying hats or whatever. And the, I, I, trading cards, I think, was the, the, the training for the ultimate team, you know? If we were hockey fans or baseball fans in the in the past, we had thought nothing about packs of cards. And I feel like sports games really tapped into that and FIFA Ultimate Team really tapped into that. And the idea of trading all of these players as cards um, makes for a compelling loop if you're into sports and you've done that kind of thing in lots of ways in the past. But it doesn't necessarily translate to Star Wars Battlefront 2, you know, clearly. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is going to be the year. This is going to be the year where we're going to see a lot of uh, reflection and a lot of commentary around the way publishers handle that messaging, and uh, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, EA will likely throw on another EA three, which is their sort of just pre E three event with their press conference and stuff. Um, but they know they they have to change the noise around this, you know. And I, I expect that we're going to we're going to hear some big things and hopefully we will hear some big things from them um didn't mind them in shadow of war but there is a fine line you can't cross thorazine 666 we spend an awful lot of time talking about how the uh, the game companies monetize their stuff and uh post-launch how there there's this constant stream of content ready for you to buy and uh it it does get a little tiresome you know it does get a little tiresome particularly when you can reflect on so much fantastic history in games where you know it was one and done and you got a full meal deal and you got a, an amazing game and then you can reflect on that game and think oh my that was so much fun and then you know you play some modern games and they they feel not quite finished and uh you know like the, the dlc plans are a little more sophisticated than possibly the 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 polish uh, of the final game that you spend your 70 80 sometimes more dollars on at the store kind of represents um, but I think of it all as growing pains. If, if Thorazine, here's Thorazine uh, 666. Now, if Injustice 2 added spawn, I can't lie, I would pay 50 bucks at <laughs> spawn rules. And that's the thing. I mean, the games industry knows that there are people that will spend extra dollars to have some cool stuff like that. Uh, you know, there it is again. EA has an investor call. It takes over our conversation uh, about uh, microtransactions and DLC. Paul Anderson, I like the idea of games go, uh, doling out story over time, but I'm with you, uh, Armageddon, uh, Armageddon B. I don't have five hours a day, seven days a week to contribute to one game. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting, right? Everybody's trying to sort of carve out for space, and it's kind of like what we were talking about with uh, uh, Steve Tilly yesterday. Um, just the idea of Microsoft making a massive play to, say, EA or Steam... Or, or some other kind of configuration out there, sort of positioning themselves to uh, to be more of a uh, a service, a platform for uh, for software across a bunch of different uh, portals, a bunch or a bunch of different platforms, like a bunch of different consoles and PCs and things like that, um, could be huge. Sean Lysick, I would play Andromeda with the crazy facial animations if EA paid me a small trans <laughs> microtransaction. I think you're you're uh, twisting the script right there. Uh, Timberwolf, I bought the F. Yeah, I bought the Battle Meal, uh, Batmobile, uh, Batmobile in Rocket League. So did I. And I also bought the uh, uh, Back to the Future DeLorean. 
yes, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, game companies know. They can tap into it. They know that they can hook you. I love the cross um, uh, sort of promotional stuff that's happening in games, like being able to download armor, uh, well, earn the armor in Monster Hunter World that is tied to uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That kind of stuff is amazing. And you see indie developers do that all the time. You saw Sil Shovel Knight pop into a bunch of different titles. I love that kind of stuff. It's really, really cool. Um, did EA address the Microsoft rumors at all? No, they, it's all just total speculation. And, and I'm sure um, there's a huge amount of regulatory stuff that has to be approved. Um, we're not going to hear about any crazy deal like that. I think, I mean, maybe it's announced at E3 if, if something that, that huge happens, but I think it's going to take a long, long time. And even when it's announced, it will take a long, long time to come into effect. Uh, definitely very interesting days for the business behind how all of these games come out. But I really hope the script changes on EA and we get some awesome news from those guys. But uh, we got some awesome news from Nintendo and congratulations on your sales, uh, you know, outpacing the Wii U so quickly and becoming the fastest selling video game machine of all time. Uh, incredible, just incredible. Uh, I didn't predict that. I don't think anybody really could predict it like that, but uh, clearly the Switch, is a very meaningful system, and, and um, uh, I, I don't know how many of you guys have it, uh, whether you're watching live or you're watching the archive. I'd love to know, you know, how, if you have it and if you feel the hype around it and the sales success around it uh, is justified, if you still love it, if you bought it and were a bit skeptical, but, it, you know, I'd love to hear your Switch stories because I feel like it has... Uh, it has kind of changed the conversation around video games a lot this year. It's made it very fun. I see it with a lot of developer friends. I'm friends with tons of people in the games industry. Clearly, I've been doing this for a while, but I, there are a lot of them are my personal friends in Facebook, and I see so many of them that have jumped on the hype train or jumped on the, the Switch love train. And a, a, a sort of recurring comment that I get about the Nintendo Switch is that it just makes games fun again. It just goes back to a time when, you know, and maybe it's the cartridge, maybe it's the fact that there is just limited uh, sort of internet DLC, you know, front page menu stuff telling you, look, you can download this and die, buy that and download this. Some of that, I mean, some of it's clearly available. There's DLC for Zelda, but it's a different experience. I mean, and maybe it's because there's so many indie games on there and it's a great indie uh, machine. I just saw Scott Jones was uh, freaking out about SteamWorld Dig 2, which was one of my best on Twitter. It's one of my favorite games of 2017 and it's amazing on the Nintendo Switch. I'm looking forward to playing SteamWorld Dig 1 again on the Switch when it comes out next month. 